Hey, hi everyone. I am Jessica Mathy. I am the right. social media yes. and marketing manager from Weld.com. So one of the big questions that we have is who is our team? So right here we have Paul Sobleski. You've seen him in some recent videos. We have Sean Lowry, also Mr. Sawblade Head, who you can find at Sawblade Head Designs. We have Jeff Ray at Titanium Ray, who's not with us tonight, but you've seen him do some work on a Harley. And then we have Chris King, who is a technical advisor to Weld.com. He's the director of skilled training at Campbellsville University. We have another new advisor. His name is Benjamin Arn. He's a weld engineer from Warren Fab in Ohio. And then we also have um, a lot of guest hosts who are gonna be coming on the channel. We're trying to diversify who we bring to the channel. So we have Brian Legalio from Bingo Welding. We just had Bob from Frank and Fab on today. We have a video coming out with him shortly. And, you know, we're looking for new talent. I do want to mention that if you feel you have something to bring to the channel, definitely reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. You can send a resume to info at weld.com. Man, what's going on? I've been looking for you all day. Well, did you finish shooting? Uh, of course I did. Oh, cool. Well, I'm on a break. I'm playing my video game Oh, right really? Now. Yeah. You only get breaks and I don't? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what to do. So check this out. This is like one of my favorite games, okay. man. It's called Raid Shadow Legends. Uh -huh. And it's like the first true console experience I've ever seen on a cell phone. I'm absolutely addicted to it. Awesome. And you know what? My baby brother actually bet me. 25 bucks that I wouldn't like playing past level 10. And you took his money. Dude, I'm on level 52. Yeah, so Ray just passed their two year anniversary and the game is bigger and better than ever before. Seriously though, they've just had a month and a half of awesome events and tournaments and there's no sign of them slowing down. And then this month, they're actually releasing a new batch of epic and legendary champions, which look pretty awesome. And more coming up in the future. So check this out. Download yours from the link in the description. You get free Epic Champion, you get 100k silver, 50 jams, and three Asian shards that you can open up and start creating your team. Um, unlike mine over here. So you will find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. And then we also have a special guest host with us. We have Bob Moffitt. So everybody say hi to Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, how you doing? Good. Good. Glad to hear your voice. Hey. And, and, and your door. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we have a few, you know, a lot of questions. You know, where's Redbeard? You know, you find Jason Becker at Art Junkies Podcast on Instagram. And Redbeard Jason Becker, you know, posts new episodes weekly. So if you want to get in touch with him, that's where he's doing now. So, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, Chris has got some good, exciting news, too, that we're going to talk about. Yeah, I would like to talk about uh, Weld.com is going to host a virtual welding competition. Uh, it's going to be exciting. You have to be a member of the Weld.com website to be able to enter this competition. It is uh, – we're going to accept 25 applications from um, – industry and then 25 from education side so if you're a student you can apply if you are a um, if you're in the welding industry you can apply for that side of it we have some great uh, great prizes to give away uh, lincoln electric is given a great power source uh, everlast uh, metabo so we have some very good prizes to give away during this competition so uh, be looking for that details will be announced this week with all of the rules uh, for submitting your your videos and your welds and all of the prizes that will be given away, so great prize packs, uh, great opportunity for uh, for you guys to uh, show us what you can do. So we're gonna we're gonna show the world. And if you guys haven't noticed, we have a new website, the new weld.com website. And then if you haven't become a welder, it's free. Go ahead, please do that. There's going to be a bunch of forms you can go ahead and check out. There's also going to be an ask anything. I can see all sorts of you know, stuff going on with that, but try to keep it welding aspect. But hey, you know, I'm sure we're gonna have some fun with some questions that you guys are gonna throw in there anyway. Um, there's also a job board. So all you guys are looking for, for jobs regardless of what state you're in. Hey, if you wanna be traveling, wanna travel on down to sunny Florida, 
Rock yourself out. Um, there's also going to be the downloadable resources. You guys, get, once again, just go there. All that is free. So go ahead and check it on out and stay tuned for all, all sorts of cool stuff. Awesome. What about Bob's Bob? channel? Bob, Everybody wants to know about Bob. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, people kind of going overboard on that, aren't they? Can you guys can you guys hear me okay? Because the audio where you're at, I mean, I'm getting like a, a warble and a, I don't know. Is it is it clear? You are. Okay. Well, man, you guys uh, uh, got a whole gang of you. I'm proud of your crew you're putting together down there. It looks like uh, good times ahead. I had uh, some comments. Somebody... Somebody asked me about Sean. I said, "Oh, I met him a long time ago, man. This guy, this guy can design some cool stuff." And uh, I showed him some pictures that I had in my phone when uh, when I met him and talked to him over at the music store. And they're going, "No way, man! That's insane." That uh, that drum set that uh, you built quite a while back, Sean. What did you what did you title that? What did what was the name of that drum set? Did you, did you? It's called it's called the Life Tree. Okay, I didn't put that in my phone, you know, but I still have all the photos of, of uh, when I first got in there and looked at it, and uh, I told some people about it beforehand. I'm going, this guy's, this guy's got some cool designs, so buckle up, man. He's got, he'll take you for a ride on some, on some steampunk designs there. So I've been, uh, myself, I've been doing a bunch of reclamation, a bunch of recycle and repurpose and repairs and stuff. I mean, it, everything I go into in the shop here and on renovation, it seems like I'm fixing something. I got to fix something. So it, it's been kind of challenging in that respect because I try to save everything and make a purpose out of it. I, don't, I, I can't stand throwing stuff away if it doesn't need to be thrown away, you know, even recycling the material or something anyway. So I've run across some kind of, cool stuff i guess i've been kind of taking note of it and i do a lot of i do a lot of tig silicon bronze and aluminum bronze for repairs and stuff and then i i kind of discovered some braided wires and making some artistic stuff and crosses and whatnot that those those wires tend to polish out well and they got a good color contrast and so i'm kind of kind of going at some artsy stuff myself there but there you go. not like you old not like you there, old buddy. You got me. You got it. You got the <laughs> world there. You got that stuff going everywhere. <laughs> well, hey, well, uh, hopefully you'll come on down here. We can go ahead and collaborate on some something cool. I got new flamethrowers, so uh, I, we're going to go ahead and incorporate in that. We did do, uh, we did do a video with some uh, special effects uh, with, with some of my flamethrowers. So, yeah, go ahead and, uh, well, come on down. Let's play some flamethrowers. <laughs> flamethrowers. I've been. Yeah. I remember buying the uh, propane for a poison concert one time at Wheatland Jam. Had uh, I was on stage with Ted, Nug I was on stage with Ted Nugent doing photographs and stuff. And then I think it was the next day, somebody sent me to the store, and I was getting I was getting all these propane canisters for a poison concert. Man, it's 105 degrees out there, and we're going to do flamethrowers. I'm going cool. Yeah, that's going to be right, man. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I signed autographs with Ted Nugent to the airport one day, so I got myself some free drinks too. So that was good. So hey, thanks, Ted. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we had uh, we had Brett Michaels and all those guys come by my campsite. I was smoking something. I don't remember what it was, ribs or something. And they all stopped by on their way to the on the way to the lake because they cool off. <laughs> so, so Bob, what what you got in store? What do I have in store? A bunch of technical issues I'm trying to work through, man. If I'll tell you what, it's been a it's been a, a fun ride here lately. Um, I've been renovating the shop and I've been rewriting part of a program and I'm still, uh, heavy into the teaching stuff and everything. But, uh, other than that, just kind of supporting these kids and the competitions and whatnot. I just got back from Gillette, Wyoming and, uh, I didn't fly into the Gillette airport there, the Gillette hair care and tire center, um, uh, that's a tough airport right there, but I flew into Rapid City, and it's a two-hour drive over to Gillette, and uh, the whole scheduling and everything was just a, it was a, it was hard, but I had to go, I had to go do it because I had to do a vendor presence, and I had to do it for the kids and everything, and there's some kids traveling from all over the United States to get in there and try to win a $15,000 scholarship, and the swag tables were unbelievable, so, and, and I caught up with some old friends, you know, from uh, Weld Tube. I caught up with the uh, Schofield boys and Outlaw Leather and all those guys there, and Ray Ripple, she was up there. 
uh, so it was fun. It was fun. I, and, but more importantly, I, I talked to a great group of students. I mean, they, these kids were, they were pretty solid. They're young, but they're ambitious, and they kind of know where they're going and whatnot. So that's refreshing yeah. from, my stand, from my standpoint. I'm not getting any younger. The kids are, the kids are into the stuff that, I mean, they're, you know, they recognize certain things, you know, and, I've, and I have to adapt to that. I have to. They don't have to adapt to me. I, I got to adapt to their apps and their, you know, their their stuff that they do. So uh, I learned a lot, and it was a beneficial trip. It just I'm still paying for it, you know, because I'm old. I don't I don't bounce back like I used to, you know. It was a it was a sleepless weekend. We're excited to have you as one of the judges in our virtual contest we have coming up. Well, thank you. So it looks like we have some questions from some of the audience members. We have a question about the hood, the welding hood. What? How low can you turn it down? Yeah, it's uh, how low of a setting can you turn your helmet down to? Um, it just depends on what what amperage that you're you're running your machine on. Um, at 120 amps, and he, and he has also stated that he's running you know, a shade 10. A shade 10 is plenty. A shade 10 is plenty for anything up to 125 amps. Anything higher than that, you want to go up. But if you're having trouble seeing, uh, those are the recommended settings from the factory. But they don't take into account your own ability to be able to see that puddle. And you, know, you have to do what's right to where, bait, where you're able to see and it's still safe. If you notice little you know, dots in your eyes or you notice anything like that happening, then your, your shade's not dark enough. Yeah. Uh, you need to turn it. You need to turn it up just a little bit. So you're just going to have to play with it a little bit and go with those factory settings. But you can play with them and tweak them just a little bit. But a shade ten is plenty for up to 125 amps. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Okay. So we have another question. I want um Paul and Bob for your input on this. Somebody asked Amplified Welding wants to know in the next 10 years, do you guys feel that the younger generation is going to be able to feel the gap of the older guys getting out of the industry? No way. Oh. no way. There's a bad shortage. Bad shortage. That's why we're trying to promote this thing to, to bring the younger generation in to pick up where we're going to leave off, you know. And Bob probably agrees to that, you know. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm sorry. I, didn't no, mean to I was just going to say, I did some research on that, actually, yeah. uh, through the university. And, and the research is that the gap's going to be there for the next at least 15 years. No. Uh, Bob can Bob can speak to this too, but what caused the gap was everybody went into computers and everybody was going to sit behind a desk, and no one wanted to get into technical education. And honestly, the public wasn't pushing technical <laughs> education. The public was pushing four-year college, four-year college, yeah. which is great, right. but you're missing a whole group of people that are not going to go to a four-year college. They need to learn a trade. So I'm seeing, from the university standpoint, I'm seeing a turn in that because the, the language has changed. We are doing more, and more universities and more schools are getting involved in teaching teaching welding. Uh, but that gap is at least probably 15 years out, maybe longer, because we're near we're nearing a half a million uh, half a million shortage right now of qualified welders. That's not the that's not the lower end. That's the high qualified welders. There's that many jobs available out there in America right now. Yeah, yeah. Getting um like with with my. My, I'm a second generation of uh, skilled trades. I mean, my dad did everything from nuclear power plants to, you know, doing customizing, you know, brass and all this, you know, uh, uh, bikes and boats. I mean, you name it. He, I mean, he did it. So I'm out there and we had a dirt floor garage and I went out there when I was a kid, you know, just watching the cool. I got to see the sparks and doing stick welding. And I, as a further I got along with it just to be, you know, be with my dad and to start running bead and stuff like that, you know, obviously fire, you know, you know, guys like fire and everything. it's sure. cool stuff. Um, um, back in the day, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't the, the, the variety and the option of all these different, you know, industries of welding. And my dad would, would, would teach me and stuff like that. But I was a, prof a professional artist. Yeah. Right. And then as I was doing design work and this things grew that, that melded, you know, in, into, Hey, well, Dad, you know, was, was, he hated always, you know, working 10, 12 hour days. I, Dad, I got the stage design. Can you go ahead and build it for me? Well, he taught me how to weld. Sure. And getting into this different industries, I worked, you know, I used to do pipe. You know, I didn't like it. I didn't see myself ever wanting to be in that industry. That's not what I wanted to do. I was more artistic. I just, but I, I did enjoy welding. So it did steer me. I had the fundamentals to the point where I, was like, I don't want, I don't see myself in the industry. Oh, 
what's this what's this rock and roll stuff there's i can do stage design and stuff like that I, and i was being a drummer so i was like i would create my own stuff and so i started to steer off here there's a vast number of, of welding industries that a lot of people don't know and it's like i don't want to do pipe welding i don't want to do this but oh there's there's underwater welding what's yeah. that that's interesting oh i love airplanes oh there's i can be you know into that yeah, so yeah absolutely you hit a great point you hit a yeah. great point there yes sir. Yeah. Claude, what do you have to say about that? About you, do you feel that we have enough coverage to fill the gap in the next ten years? Uh, I think that some young people are going to have to realize that there's an opportunity, and they're going to have to buckle down. That's what I. I mean, it's not. I see some young people that are going to step up, but I also see a gap, and the reason I see a gap is because lack of maturity. Lack of maturity. I mean, they're depending on their, they're living off their bones. And if you don't believe me, take it away from them and look how irritable they get instantly. You know, they can't function without their bones. And so, I mean, some of them, you know, I've talked to enough of them that they know the processes and they know what they have to do. That general knowledge thing, that background thing of the code quality processes, if they want to step up and, and drive, there's an opportunity and some of them realize it, but I think there's going to be a little bit of a gap, yeah. I mean, gee whiz, we're all, us old-timers ain't going to die all at once. I mean, maybe, but gee whiz. Uh, sorry. Uh, you, know, it, I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give back what I can when I can because I'm not going to be around forever, and, and I'm trying to I've, – I've been doing this a long time. I've been trying to give it back and get young people encouraged uh, for the simple fact that, you know, we, we want that – competent workforce you know it i mean my job is to go out and produce somebody that can walk into industry and take the reins and and grow you know i feel successful when they go out and within a couple years three years four years they're making as much or more money than i am i'm not here to produce a broom pusher and attacker and a and a you know that's not my job my job is to produce somebody that can be uh, code quality and work the work the trades. Be a craftsman. Be a fabricator. Be a, a something that that my local business and industry needs. Uh, long term, they'd probably want to get into uh, you know expediting inspection. Uh, there's a lot of spinoffs on it, you know. And then that you always want that entrepreneurial thing to kick in because the hobbyist and the and the you know the coolest job is to work for yourself, isn't it? Isn't it? Cool. Yeah. I mean, set your own hours and do it. You know, do that thing. There, I see two jobs right now that are open that that somebody could really fill. Uh, one of them is regulator and torch repair, and the other one is machine repair. I mean, you could blend those two together, but I mean, I just can't. I can't find anybody to to fix for regulators and stuff. And I hate to, the, that throwaway market. We used to have somebody that was very competent around this area. Uh, a good friend of mine, <clears throat> very meticulous, and, I mean, he made a good living repairing regulators and torches and whatnot. Of course, he re he relied on the refinery there at Conoco, but in northern Oklahoma, he took on work from all over the place. Right now, if I took a, a regulator in, it would be shipped down there close to you guys to get repaired. Now, what's going on with that? How come, how come nobody's around here, you know? So, I, you know, if I was young, I'd do it. I'd certainly do it because I know the money in it, and uh, I think it would be a very lucrative deal. It would be somewhat prestigious to do it on your own and make a name for yourself. Uh, equipment repair. I've got one here in Wichita that just he's always screaming for somebody that will come to work and, and do the diagnostics on a welding machine and be able to repair it. You know, there's good money in that, too. I know there's good money in it because every time I see one of his invoices, I about croak, man. You know, and I and I diagnose it for him. I just can't fix circuit boards and stuff like that. But I, you know, I go tell him what it is, and then he'll still charge me for a a fifty dollar, seventy five dollar diagnostic fee. Wait a minute, I I'm the one that told you what it, what was wrong with it. <laughs> Come on, man, be right with me, will you? <laughs> oh man, it's uh there's opportunity out there, and there's it, I mean, it doesn't have to be throwing sparks all the time. You know, it could be it can be some facet or uh. Uh, something related to the welding industry. I mean, you could be a general manager of a of a weld.com page or something. I mean, you know, 
Come on, Vez. That was a joke. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Come on, man. Work with me here. Work, work with me here. Is there a little lag in the audio here or something or what? <laughs> yeah, there might be. We have, um, we have a question for Chris now. There's somebody from Southern California, and they want to know any advice you have to approach school boards to increase funding for fabrication and welding, like in the schools. Oh, like, what's your best advice? My best advice is you have to get in good with the counselors. Uh, you have to show you have to show your worth. If you are if you are trying to get a new program started or you're trying to convince someone that it's important, bring people from the industry to the school. That's the best way to approach that. I don't know if you're talking about the high school level, college level, um, but if it's at the high school level, you have to get in with the counselors and you have to get in with the administration and the, and the school board. They are the ones that have to, have to you, they, you have to promote this to. Um, bring people in from industry, show the worth of it, show how much money can be made in the welding industry a lot of people don't know yeah. and a lot of people don't know anything about what they you see the word welding and it's all encompassing when it's not uh bro bob brought up some good points sean brought up some very good points welding is a specialty field you're going to go one way or the other but there are a million different directions the folks that you need to approach this they need to notice that these kids can go to work straight out of welding school yeah. with very good careers so uh, that's my best advice: is, is get get involved with the industry. Just talk to them and get them involved with the school system. Mm -hmm. And little debt. And little yeah. debt. And Very little, little debt. debt. Yeah. So we're also and getting and job placement mm -hmm. comes along with that. Yeah. We have a very specific question. Somebody actually messaged us earlier about this too, about welding hard ox 450. Can it be welded like regular steel or are there some differences with it? They just messaged again on the live stream. So it's somebody who really wants to know. Oh, so well, Yeah, the hard ox 450 is, is a very hard, uh, very hard steel, but it's it's alloyed. So it is uh, it's made to be tough, uh, impact toughness. It's made for wear plate. Uh, there are there's a literally a book chapters long on hard ox so uh there we don't have enough time to cover everything about hard ox here so welding procedures and, and everything preheating post heating inner pass temperatures and all of the, those recommendations uh you can download but what we're going to do is we're going to post a link on our website or in our in our in our uh, uh platforms so you can actually go download that link and download the the uh the information that you need um, but um, we just don't have enough time to cover everything about hard ox in, in this one short live. Yeah, we can post it on the Ask Anything forum on the weld.com page. Yeah. And Bob, I have a question for you. Somebody wants to know any advice on TIGging chrome molly cage and chassis using a Synchro Wave 210 with pulse. He's saying pros or cons. Chrome molly, yep. Synchro Wave 210. Yep. And he said pulse. Pros and cons? Question mark. What's the problem? That's a good setup. That'd be the that'd be a good setup right there. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> taking taking the matter into full consideration, I'd say I think so. You bet. Blue uh, collar Nico. I mean, I, that's not a that's not a bad thing. Um, Chrome Molly. Uh, I went through a I went through a deal with. Uh, uh, a subcontractor here at Strother Field, and they were doing seat frames with Chrome Molly, and I got into a, a deal with a vendor, and they were they were complaining they had bad gas and whatnot, and they didn't because I took a piece of stainless, a piece of aluminum out there, and the guy was griping about bad gas, and I said, well, put a bead on each one of those, and if it's clean, you don't have bad gas. What it was was degassed material. The material was not it was not. Uh, matter of fact, they didn't even have heat. Uh, trace on it and everything so I they brought up a problem but they got busted when they brought up the problem anyway I learned a lot on that and it was what do you weld chrome molly with well if it's thin wall tubing uh, you can weld it with an ADS D2 and you're fine it's strong you don't have to go through post weld heat treat and that pulse on a on a sinker wave, if you if you're doing it with pulse, you can make some beautiful welds, and you're, you know, metallurgically you're not destroying the the material. If it's thin, you know, you want to you want to have that controlled heat input. Uh, you should be strong. Shouldn't have to do anything as far as the post weld heat treat. Uh, there's another wire that's kind of somewhat acceptable, 
But through all this stuff, I learned that these guys were saying, absolutely, do not weld 4130 chrome molly tubing with 4130 filler wire. And I'm going, gee whiz, that's, that's the first thing I would have done. Anyway, I, you know, that's a good setup. It's just, again, it depends on how thick that material is. Uh, you know, I read a lot of specs and stuff with aircraft over the years. And back in the old days, they were oxyacetylene welding it. And then no post-weld heat treat. Because all that general broad heat that they were putting on there took care of itself. And it was a slow cooling rate. So, you know, no, no harm. You know, again, it all depends on how thick it is. I don't know what they're building. I don't know what the the uh, project end use is. If it's something that you're going to be riding in a recreational vehicle, or you're going to put a motor to it, or there's going to be personnel around it, I'd be real careful. I would I would look at specs and regs, and if it's going to be under vibration, I'd make sure you you don't leave any craters in where you terminate the weld. Uh, fill everything in, make smooth radiuses so there's no heat risers in it. I mean heat risers. There's no uh, uh, stress risers in it from from sharp edges. So, uh, you know, chrome mollies, another one of those uh, could be brittles, super strong, uh, you know, done correctly, no worries. But like everything else, uh, pay attention to your work, your craftsmanship. So... I hope that answered. I, I don't know. He can follow up with me or somebody, but Are you did that answer? The- you want to? Uh, so we have two questions on. We have two students. It looks like, or they're at least trying to get new starts. We have one who's asking tips to pass three G one eighth aluminum plate to D one seven point one specs, and then somebody else just saying three G stick. There are two separate questions. Chris, you want to give any advice on passing three G? I need, I need way more specific <laughs> you gotta okay whoever said that that was McCollum Weldfab and Christian from Delaware if you guys want to send in a little bit more you know what questions you have as far as passing the 3G do you guys have a specific issue or can you be more specific yeah because I could do an hour long video on how to pass those tests and we, we're doing a lot so yeah there's a lot of there's a lot to say in that so Send some more information. You can send it through, I guess, the website or leave us a message. If you have specific questions about a specific problem, I'll be glad to be glad to answer those for you. All right, we appreciate you guys for for jumping on. Do you guys want to say anything else? Well, one thing uh, I, I want to get back with what uh, what Bob was talking about is, I mean. I'm going to say old timers, and I don't want to be any disrespect on that, but you know, that generation, it's like that's the generation, in my opinion, is like, you know, America was strong. When you made something, it lasted forever. Like I said, I started, you know, my business with an, a Lincoln Electric SP100, and that thing, I've dropped it out of my van three different times. It's got dents in it, it's 20 plus years old, and I've literally built stuff that's toured the world with it. Um, Getting back with the knowledge of, of you guys, it's so important. I'm, I'm glad we have the, tech, the technology now where everybody can, you know, hey, all your all your knowledge you can actually, you know, videotape it. Yeah. Before I was telling my dad when he was you know, he had when he was he had cancer, I said, Dad, man, film this stuff, film this stuff. I want this stuff, and I didn't get get a chance to do that. Bob and and, and Chris and Paul, all you guys are, like I said, that's kind of like the the old school guys. Man, you guys have so much knowledge, and, and all the younger generation really need to. Even with the even with the the tech schools and stuff like that, there's so much old knowledge and old yeah. little tips and stuff like that that right. you guys have that it's kind of can't you kind of can't get with with the books or the video. Yeah, right. It's one of those things where you kind of need to go experience that face to face. I mean, yeah, I mean, the videos are great. You get to see all the well pools. You get to see the settings and stuff. But there's a you know there's a there's a feel when you when you're when you're doing stick or you're doing t- tig like I said there was a gentleman that was talking about hey I can't see the well pool what do you guys have recommendations for my dad would my dad would screw with me all the time he would he would turn off the gas on welding or he would, yeah. he'll mess with the wire feed da, 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 you know or and I'm welding the stick and all of a sudden I'm like he's looking over he, he he's drinking his beer so it's it's all that feel so even if you're, he would he would make me once you get that thing just purring you get that bacon sizzle and the, and things just melting like butter 
you get that feel and then he says, okay, now do it blindfold. And you just run those beads and you get that feel. So when the point where, I mean, you don't want to be welded where you can't see the pull and stuff, but there's certain things where you need to do a couple of inches and you know right. that you're, you can at least do a couple of inches and you got that feel and it's just, it's just like, oh, it's just butter. You know, you can do a couple, yep. you look at it, okay, it's good. You do it, it's something like that. I don't recommend not seeing your well pool, but it's all about that touch and, you know, meeting these guys in person and, and getting those experiences that you can't get on video. It's, it's. Yeah, right. Go to school. I mean, it's 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 the best thing I can say. You know, do the video stuff. Do as much stuff as you can. You know, be a member of well.com But whenever you can go to school, it's it's the best thing you can actually do for yourself. So that's what I have to say. Yeah, everybody, go follow Bob. You can stay in touch with him at the Ram Nation fifty eight on Instagram. You guys can follow him. You can stay tuned to see new videos from Let's Weld Something. Bob, let us know whenever you have a new episode. We'll definitely share it for you. And just so you know, that Maga the guy McCollum Weldfab, he was just messing with you, Bob, about the 3G passing it. He said he'll see you Thursday. <laughs> oh, yeah, he'll, he'll be here. I, I saw him come on, and I wasn't uh, – I'm, I'm looking – I need to follow up with what Chris said here in just a second. But, yeah, I, uh, Jesse, I saw him come on here, but he's going to come down and get some x-ray shot Thursday morning. So, apparently, he's going to fail them all. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, I got him. He's, I'll take care of him. He's a, he come down, uh, he came here on, on a day when I had a, uh, a gentleman that was going to start welding for the very first time and he was in a wheelchair. So it's like I had the true beginner and I had the true golden arm up here and I had him in my shop at the boat at the same time. And we all learned from each other and that, how about that? And I mean, it was all good stuff. So, uh, anyway, uh, Chris, you had, I think the question was, how do you get funding? How do you get people involved in as far as your your school, your your organization? How do you get them to buy in and and support your program? Yep. I just I just happened to be working on the last of my uh, capital outlay uh, report here, and I, I just wanted to say that <clears throat> I'm backing you up when you said you got to get your you got to get your administrators involved. If they don't get it, you know. I mean, you can sit here and write the most beautiful proposals and shoot for the moon, but if, if they are not on board, you are just, you're just practicing writing. Right. And I've done this. I've been in this game for a long time. And I can tell you, uh, and there's a lot of years I don't even ask. I don't even put, I don't even put one together because I know full well, I don't have any room for anything. And if they did buy me something, that'd be cool. But, you know, that pre-planning, if you can get your administrators on board, and take them out and make them or let them see the the opportunities that exist for people in this trade in this industry. Uh, your administrators will soon realize that some of these people go out and make twice as much money as they're making. Absolutely. Now, of course, when you when you tell them that in a meeting, it hacks them off. They don't accept that very well. But uh, you know, we we have we have young people that go out and make 150k easy. Easy, uh, and I, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here writing the last of my items that I want on here, and I'm writing. I always have to do the justification behind it. You can put down all this stuff, you know, and it doesn't matter. One of the first things that I have listed on here is the camera equipment for this department, the department, because nobody down here is getting support for promoting their program and going out and working with these kids. So if they see it visually, and we can put together stuff easily down here. It, I mean, we're doing it every day anyway. Why not, why not put together some decent equipment, uh, record it, edit it. You can make all kinds of cool little vids out of it, put the music to it. And, uh, or we might just call Sean and have him have drum beat to the background of it or something, you know, get their attention. But the whole thing is you, you got to get these the administrators, the, it's not so much, you know, capital outlay is local. Perkins is federal dollars. And that's, that's kind of the, that's a tough one. So, but getting your local board, if your buddies with somebody on your school board or somebody that can kind of put that, put that note in somebody's ear that, Hey, this kind of, you need to be looking at this. You need to be approving this, you know, whether it's the building, the equipment, something, but it, it's tough. It's really tough. Uh, most of them, most of them don't get it. You know, I've traveled around all over the United States. You go up into Milwaukee area, those people get it. 
I mean, look at all the cool companies that are around Milwaukee and have been throughout the years. I mean, the, the history of it. But you come down in my area and it might be a, a hit and miss. You know, it might be, you know, one area might get it and another one, you know, oh, we don't want to mess with that, you know. So it's a, it's a game. We're just playing a game, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another, another another resource there too, Bob. I'm glad you made me think of it. Uh, you reaching out to the to the industry, uh, reach out to your the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Get get a good relationship with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they they know the businesses and they they have the connection to the schools. Uh, that's another great resource to bring in folks to get to get those uh, to get those administrators on board. Show them they have to show their worth. Uh, and once you get them to buy into the worth, then they'll start promoting programs like this. Well, you know, essentially what it boils down to is we're all networking. Yeah. You know, we we gotta we gotta get to know those people. Yeah. Uh, we go to these meetings all over the place, and and you know, really, we're just we're networking. We're we're buying, we're promoting our programs, and we're trying to we're trying to do things correctly and ethically, and and get people on board, but. When you're reaching out and wanting some support, you gotta you gotta have those proposals together, and you can't be frivolous. I don't like wasting. I like recycling equipment. I'm looking at some machines right here. I'm looking at I'm looking at thirty thousand dollars request from one of my other instructors, and I don't think I can justify it. You know, I'd rather I'd rather do the repairs on his his existing equipment, and maybe put some of my machines up there, and I go with some smaller units. Yeah, it's all it's all dynamic. You know, everything moves around. You you know, it's like your enrollment. It's like anything. You, you, you know, you just gotta gotta pay attention to it. Just like your welds, you gotta pay attention. Things happen. There's all kinds of variables. So, anyway, all, all right. good stuff. I think we're gonna wrap it up. Anything else? I just wanted to make sure if anybody else has any questions. Oh, here's Todd. Okay. Huh? When do I get to smoke you on the links again? Todd's on there, Bob. He said, "When, when?" <laughs> camera guy. Hey, uh, the links again. Yeah, the, the camera guy. Camera guy. You know, this would be a good time to challenge me to a game of golf because my shoulders are not. I can't even swing a club, so you might be able to win. You know? <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking. He's a. He's all right. All right. Well, if we have, if we don't have any more questions, you guys can reach out to any of our advisors you can reach out to our website um, weld.com go to the forums register as a member and stay tuned this week we'll be announcing the contest rules and the prize packages and everything like that and we really appreciate you guys tuning in tell them what some of the prizes are yeah he went and he said we have a we have a really nice machine from lincoln it's almost six thousand dollars really yeah (laughs) yeah you guys better stay tuned you're gonna want this one yeah (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Bob. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. I appreciate I, I appreciate the invitation. You guys behave. Try to try to take care of that. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Take care. See ya.